Hello and welcome to the second chapter of this introduction to Arduino. In this chapter, we'll discuss basic concepts of voltage, current, and resistance. We'll present these concepts using water as a metaphor for electricity, which will set us up nicely for more advanced topics like Ohm's law, voltage dividers, and power. This is the second chapter of a 10-part series that has been developed for a local hackerspace here in Tucson. Some of the concepts I'll share today in this and in future chapters came from this Makershed publication by Charles Platt. So here we have the simplest kind of DC circuit, a battery that's wired up to a light bulb through a switch. And we can see that we have a wire that runs from the battery anode, which is the positive terminal, through a switch, through a light bulb, and then the circuit is closed at the battery's cathode, or the negative terminal. The conventional model of current flow tells us that when we close this switch, electrons from the battery will flow from the anode or positive terminal of the battery through a small filament in the light bulb and to the cathode or negative terminal of the battery, also known as the ground. The small filament creates resistance for the flow of electrons and in doing so gets hot. And as that filament heats up, it glows, resulting in light. And now we can start talking about how DC current flow is a lot like water flow. In fact, if we were to draw an analogy to an engineered water system, we could say that batteries are to electricity what pumps are to water. So let's go ahead and replace our battery with the pump. Continuing with our analogy, in an engineered water system, we could say that switches are to electricity what valves are to water. So let's replace our switch with a water valve. And finally, loads like light bulbs in an electrical system are a lot like water wheels in an engineered water system. So let's replace our light bulb with the water wheel. Now that we have this foundation, let's see if we can throw some additional electrical terms into our model. We know that in water systems, pumps produce pressure, which helps move water through the system. As such, pressure generated by a pump is what voltage is to a battery. Also, the resulting water flow that's induced by the pressure is what amperage is to an electrical circuit. But what about the water wheel? Well, that wheel is creating resistance to flow, in effect slowing the flow of water down through the system. In this way, a load in an electrical circuit, such as a light bulb, essentially creates resistance to flow, similar to a water wheel in our engineered water system. In electrical systems, we measure this resistance in units of ohms. Here's another way of using water as a metaphor for electricity. If I start with a bucket and fill it with water, and then I take a drill and make a small hole near the bottom of the bucket, there will be water pressure pushing on that hole, and that pressure will be proportional to how much water is in the bucket. Another way of thinking about this is the amount of pressure head on that hole. In fact, I can get a feeling for that pressure by putting my hand up against the hole. The water pressure pushing on my hand is the same as voltage in an electrical system. This will be an important concept to remember later on when we talk about input pins on an Arduino. The diameter of the hole in the bucket will realize a certain amount of resistance on the water that wants to exit through that hole. The wider the hole, the less the resistance. And finally, the flow of water that exits that hole is the same as amperage in an electrical system. You can see that all other things being equal, if I increase the head on this bucket, if I put more water in it, I'll get more flow since there's more pressure on the system. Similarly, if I let the head drop, the flow should slow down as a result of having less pressure on that hole. Also, if I decrease the, the resistance on the system by making the hole bigger, I'll get more current flowing out of the bucket, whereas if I make the hole smaller, less current will flow. This is a good conceptual model for understanding Ohm's law, which we will discuss in a later chapter. The bottom line is, is if you can understand this simple conceptual model, you'll have a pretty good grasp on some important concepts for working with an Arduino, as we'll discuss later. To make things a little more real world, here's an example taken straight from my backyard. Here you can see I have flow, or amps, resulting from pressure 
or bolts, used to supply my hose from a water tank. Here you can also see that I have my load, or a resistor, standing on the sidelines, waiting to insert himself in my conceptual model while I'm not looking. And here he is, stepping on my hose, thus diminishing the diameter of the pipe, feeding my current. As such, he's acting as a resistor, and you can see the impact that he's having on the flow, or amps, coming out of my hose. Now that we have this conceptual model mapped out, let's see if we can find some other real-world analogies. Here we can see the things that can go wrong in engineered water systems resulting from too much water flow, or current, can similarly happen in electrical systems. Just as the stormwater channel in the previous slide failed due to too much water flow, here you can see that this electrical system burned out as a result of conveying too many amps through those tiny electrical traces. And here's an example of how a hydrologist might try to apply these concepts to a watershed. In this case, you can see that this watershed is host to a variety of woody plants that are not very effective at holding back or resisting runoff from a heavy rainfall event. In a watershed, we might try to increase resistance to flow by changing the land cover type to something that's more effective at resisting runoff, in this case, grasses. Similarly, in electrical systems, we might try to protect our tiny electrical traces and components from too much current by adding resistors, kind of like populating a watershed with grasses to slow down the flow of runoff, or in this case, flowing electrons through a circuit board. Well, that sums things up for this chapter. In the next chapter, we'll discuss how to measure volts, current, resistance, and we'll introduce Ohm's law, which is important as it relates to designing circuits that incorporate our Arduino.